Hello, welcome to the Thursday, May 16th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Magecard is in the news again. The name Magecard refers to a group or groups that inject keystroke loggers into checkout pages using JavaScript. The script is usually added either as part of a legitimate set of JavaScripts that the website includes or named to fit in with the naming scheme of other JavaScript libraries. In this case, the domain name used to exfiltrate the stolen data was selected to mimic the popular Font Awesome library. The exfil domain has been taken down by now, but as I am recording this, the link to it and some of the malicious code that is found on the Forbes website apparently is still there. For a long time now, attackers have taken advantage of command and control channels over TLS to encrypt their communications. Now, as a countermeasure, monitoring systems try to fingerprint TLS connections to detect anomalies in TLS options and ciphers. Indicators of compromise distributed to detect malware command control channels then often include these TLS fingerprints that are unique for a particular piece of malware. Akamai is now reporting that some malware is actively tampering with TLS parameters to randomize ciphers in order to evade this type of detection. Now, Akamai calls this technique cipher stunting. Personally, I'm not sure how effective this technique is if it's used against the network that actually watches for anomalous TLS fingerprints. The randomized ciphers, uh, I would think uh, they're actually easier to spot than if malware is really just trying to impersonate a popular web browser or other software that uh, is typically whitelisted or known as normal. And it's typically not all that hard to do. The reason that the malware often does have a different fingerprint is that it either uses a different TLS library than the operating system uses by default, or that whoever wrote the malware doesn't take advantage of all the individual features that the standard libraries offer. And Google released a notice to customers recalling its Titan security keys. Uh, Google released these security keys last year to promote the WebAuthN protocol and passwordless authentication that goes with it. Affected are keys that support the Bluetooth Low Energy protocol. The use of Bluetooth Low Energy was somewhat controversial when the key was released initially because it does have sort of some security issues. But on the other hand, Bluetooth Low Energy provided sort of the largest possible compatibility across different mobile devices. But apparently, that's sort of the part that wasn't implement that quite right. To attack the key, an attacker has to be close enough to intercept the key's signal as it's being used. It's only being used as the user presses a button on the key. Keys without Bluetooth are not vulnerable. And then we've got a couple more patches to talk about. First of all, the Samba project, that's the open source SMB or file sharing implementation, released an update patching an authentication vulnerability. The vulnerability affects the S4U2 self extension to Kerberos. An attacker could use the vulnerability to impersonate other users via a man in the middle attack. And SAP and released an update for its products, uh, fixing about a dozen different vulnerabilities. The most severe one with a CVSS rating of 8.4 could be used by an authenticated user to escalate privileges. Well, and that's it for today. Uh, great to meet some listeners in San Diego uh, this week. 
Next event will be in San Antonio in a bit more than a week. So maybe again, uh, going to see some of you in person. If you do like this podcast, uh, then please tell your friends about it. And of course, tweet or use whatever social media you like uh, to advertise uh, this podcast. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.